Yes, guys, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? We're back. It's Manchester United vs RB mm. Leipzig. We are at home again. Oh, God. I'd much rather be on the road again these days uh, with Manchester United's record at Old Trafford. But myself and Joel Smith are here to bring you through the preview. We're going to have our predicted 11s, predicted scores, a little bit of chinwag on the pre-match stuff as well. So make sure you're getting your thoughts on all of that in those comments below. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. And of course, if you can, join as well because we have exclusive content for you members. And we've also got some some cheeky little merch on the way which mm. you might get to, to have a look at just Lovely while good the stuff. phone rings with, with a delivery. Maybe it is some of that cheeky little merch. Maybe it is. But anyway, Joel, mm -hmm. how you doing? I'm doing very well. How are you doing? I'm all right. We weren't, we weren't together for the game. I know. It was sad, wasn't it? Uh, did we you didn't miss, miss me? much, did we? I don't think we missed anything. Did you miss me? Oh, I missed you, but we didn't miss much. Together, how you know did I mean? it go? It was just a bit of a... Just dull, wasn't it? It was so dull that it didn't even... We were just chatting. We weren't even talking about football. We were just looking at the match. Where did the conversation go to? That's we why I we want to We were trying to talk a bit about what we were seeing, but really, when it was such a boring nil-nil, there was no shots on target for, I think, the first 30 minutes or something. It's just mm. like, what more can we talk about here? Mm. It was it was fun. It was nice to watch the game and stuff. It's always fun, um, always enjoyable, but it wasn't... I think the thing about even the, as enjoyable result as the Newcastle was match. Not the result. No, the result was, the was all right. And the team selection, yeah. I think that was that was a big problem, wasn't it? Yeah, the, the yeah, and a draw against Chelsea really isn't a bad result. And again, we, after we got battered six-one against Spurs, if you said the next three matches you've got Newcastle, you've got uh, PSG, and you've got Chelsea, if someone said you're going to get nine, uh, seven points out of a possible nine from that, I think we'd all would have taken that. Especially if they were like you'll, you'll draw against Chelsea, you'll beat Paris away, and you'll beat Newcastle. I'll just swap the PSG draw for a win against Chelsea, but. But, what, but yeah, yes. I think yeah. a lot of people would have taken that. But as you said, it was it was the the nature of the performance. But Chelsea weren't any better. Chelsea were worse than United mm. were. And obviously the onus is on us to, to go out and get the win because we're the home team. But, you know, this is a team that we're going to be probably fighting for top four or at least that's the plan. What frustrated me about the game, and we're obviously going to go into pre-match stuff as well. We'll, well. we'll lead on from this to that. Don't worry about that. And you know I'm someone that likes to give Oli his... his, his He's just rewards and, and defend him when he deserves it. And yeah. I gave him much credit after the PSG game. The big fault for me against Chelsea was, and he said it after the game, was I picked this team because these lads did well against Newcastle. Mm. And I think that's that's mass that's that's really silly because you're not playing Newcastle. Mm. You're playing Chelsea, and surely you have to play the game, you have to play the opposition. And that to me sounded like we didn't, we just, oh, we played Daniel James because he played well before. Oh, we played Mata and because he played well before. Now, I think Mata's actually still got his uses to United, but not in these kind of games. Mm. And I just found it like a really weird way to pick your team. And especially when you consider these are some of the players that you relied on last year and they didn't do anything mm. for you. So why, why are you going back to it now? And I just found it really weird that you could say, oh, well, they played well against Newcastle, so I had to play them today. Whereas, what about, you know, okay, if you're going to use it to say that, we've seen some players play badly and not get mm. taken out of the team. Mm. So, I, th I think he maybe he said that more than just, oh, well, they were quite good, let's do that again. I, I, I like to think, or I hope that there was more going into that decision than just, they were quite good against Newcastle. Maybe it wasn't that. Maybe it's an easy thing to say. Maybe he's just sort of saying that because... He wanted a reason uh, to, to drop Pogba without getting questioned, to drop Mata and, and Greenwood without being questioned. Because let's not forget, I know Mason Greenwood came on against um, Chelsea, but he's not started a game for four matches now. Mm. <coughs> uh, or three matches, sorry. Um, amidst rumours that Solskjaer has denied that he's turned up late for training, these sorts of things. When... Actually, still not starting games. Paul Pogba, still not starting games. Uh, Matic isn't starting games either. And I think maybe at some point he says these things to protect the players that he's dropped rather than because he actually thinks that's the best team to win the game or he actually thinks that the, the only reason these people aren't being played is because there are problems and he's, and he's trying to cover that. Because, I, yeah, I, I, we all know that 
when everyone is fit and everyone is performing, Paul Pogba starts Man United because mm. he, he did last season. He, he always starts Paul Pogba when he can. But he, he spoke again about, um, you know, maybe rushing back in a bit quickly, had coronavirus, he didn't have a proper pre-season. We saw Paul Pogba talking the other day about how, you know, the start of the season, felt we all felt tired, we didn't get a pre-season, all that kind of thing. So Pogba's clearly struggling or clearly has been struggling. And I think when he came on, he looked quite good, but he was... It's still taking a long time mm. on the ball and, and, you know, the sorts of things that we saw him get criticised for in the first few matches. So maybe he he picked the team he did because he thought that was the best team available and it just happened to be the one that played quite well against Newcastle. But yeah, Newcastle isn't Chelsea. Mm. So to say, well, we beat Newcastle with this team, surely we can beat Chelsea with this team. The thing is, I don't think he thinks like that because when they beat Newcastle, the next game after Newcastle wasn't Chelsea, it was PSG, and he changed the team massively. Mm. So I don't think it's just like, well, they beat Newcastle, so keep playing them. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was as simple as that, although he did sort I of boil it down to that afterwards. You could, you have to kind of look at as well that, you know, if maybe Cavani had joined up with the team a week earlier, Cavani can play through the middle, Rashford plays out on the left, Daniel James doesn't need to start, and it's yeah. not... <coughs> as weird, maybe he was kind of forced into that because, like you said, Greenwood hasn't played minutes recently. Whereas Daniel James had played that game mm-hmm. against Newcastle, so he's probably closer to fitness. But it was still a frustrating team for me. I yeah. felt like we we kind of, I think, feel both managers were kind of happy with the draw, which was which was weird. Yeah. Moving on from that, and mm-hmm. something that came out of that game was obviously that picture of Donny Van der Beek sitting there. Um, I think he looked like every fan around the world, though, just bored of the game rather than it meaning anything deeper. But um, Danny van der Beek wasn't involved in that game. Should he be starting against Leipzig? And are you concerned about the lack of action he's been getting? Um, I'm not concerned about it, no. I th- he's just joined. We've got a midfield that has played together a lot of times. We- we've got... A lot of matches back to back to back throughout the start of the season. Big big teams as well. It's not like it's we've had an easy start to the season. I know you know Brighton and Palace aren't shouldn't be the most difficult games, and they turned out to be. But we all know we're in a tough spot now in terms of matches. There's PSG, there's uh, Chelsea we've just had, there's Arsenal coming up, there's RB Leipzig who we're obviously talking about today, and then we've got Everton not long after that. So we're in a, we're in a tough patch of matches here where I think Van, Donny's looked good every time he's come on. Um, and I, and I personally would have given him more minutes if I was the manager. But we're, what, six games into the season? Seven games in? Like, I don't think we need to start crapping ourselves yet. I like, thought Ever really overreacted as well. Yeah, saying, oh, I did. Why is he here? And it, all this, that and the other. And people saying, oh, is Ali not playing him because he didn't want to sign him? And I feel like nah. there's a lot of... like. I would have started, I felt starting McTominay and Fred in that game was the wrong decision because I felt we didn't need the two. I thought Fred and Pogba should have mm. started, if not Pogba, Donny van der Beek. So I kind of understood. And then him not coming on was weird because I felt yeah. he was someone that could have changed that game. Mm-hmm. Like I felt he should have come on in the game. I feel he should have played more. And I definitely feel he should have played more at the start of the season rather than Pogba when yeah, Pogba just I come back from Corona. I feel Oli's done what he should have done with Pogba at the start like two weeks later. Mm. But I'm not overly concerned by it because, and we'll see our predicted 11 soon, um, there's loads of games coming up. Yeah. And I think Donny van der Beek will, will play for Man United. If, I think he's shown that he's, yeah. he's, he's got talent. If he plays well for United, he's going to get a lot of chances this season. There's no doubt about that. Like, even, you know, I know Fred was a different situation <laughs> where he maybe wasn't wanted by, by Mourinho, but he barely played in his first season. And what was it, 40-odd games he played last season? Like, we don't need to worry about careers being on the rocks after seven games. I do think it was actually... I would have played him more, like I said, but I think it was a little bit unprofessional by his agent to come out and be like, why is he on the bench? It wasn't... I I I don't think it was his agent. I think it was um, someone in... There's like a journalist that is on TV in Holland. Oh, okay. Forgot his name. That is linked to the agency. He's not directly his agent. Okay, fair enough. But, obviously... (laughs) There's going to be people in Holland that look at that because Donny van der Beek is going to be a big story. Yeah. Do you know so what I mean? Like they him want coming to, to Manchester talk about United it. is yeah. is like when Gareth Bale. I know Gareth Bale's not English, but the British media lap mm. it up when he's in Spain because yeah, they're yeah. gonna they're it's gonna focus move. on him. Yeah? yeah. So look, Donny van der Beek will play for Manchester United. Yeah. I think he's all, the frustrating thing for me was we didn't need Fred and McTominay in that game. We needed one of them. Yeah. And I feel we should have brought Donny on earlier, but Pogba came on. Mm. So do we leave Pogba on the bench? Then you're going to have people saying, well, Pogba, Pogba should have came on, mm. you know, like after the game, if Pogba's not used. So well, it's a bit of a weird one. And 
a lot of people saying, why is James starting and Van der Beek's not? Well, James is a winger. They're not the same Van position. Yeah, like it's a bit. It's like it, th this is always a, this is always the case with with Twitter, especially in social media, which is obviously a world that we're very familiar with. Every single time United don't win a match, there was a player on the bench who would have won it for us, like as far as Twitter's concerned. So if they'd have brought Van der Beek on, why didn't you bring Pogba on? There's a World Cup winner on the bench, he would have won you the match. Uh, you bring Pogba on instead, why didn't you bring Van der Beek on? He's looked great every time he's played, he would have won you the match. When maybe we, if we'd have changed the whole system at the start, I'm sure the results could have been different. But imagine if we'd have lost to PSG. The uproar at, at playing Fred and McTominay. It's naive from Solskjaer playing those two players in that team when, you know, look at who they're coming up against Mbappe and Neymar. What did you expect? But we won that game. And that's the same midfield that just beat PSG three days before. Mm. So it's not as though it was some outrageous decision to play, oh, the midfield that beat the team that came second or runners up in the Champions League last season. You're playing them again. Mm. It's not that insane, is it? And, and again, there's always people who like to think they know about coaching and think they know about all these things when it's like there isn't always one person on a bench that didn't that happened to not come on that would have won you that game. And people like to think, well, if you'd have brought this person on, he'd have won it for us. And if sometimes that we, on, we don't know the full story. Exactly. Because Van der Beek may just be adjusting to yeah, things. Maybe he's not know, fit. Off the pitch. They did, remember, let's not forget that the Dutch league didn't come back after March after yeah. March, he hasn't played in eight months. Like maybe he's not quite fit enough to be starting in a league he's never played before yeah, against Chelsea, which is faster already than the Dutch league against the likes of Kante, Chelsea. Yeah, these kind of like I get it. I get that we want him to have more minutes, and so do I. But he has he's barely played football since March. He needs to be brought back in slowly. Look at Paul Pogba, who came back and played last season. He's looked slow and he's taken his time on the ball and he's looked sluggish. And Solskjaer's trying to manage that situation. Like you said, Van der Beek will play a lot of minutes for United this season. I'm not worried about that. Um, one To flip this on its head, though, and um, kind of grab a positive out of it, we got to see Cavani, who was another one of our mm. signings, who I thought looked bright when he came on. We've got to see Alex Tellers against PSG. He looked very good. Donny van der Beek, in the, in the times we've seen him on the pitch, looks like he had something. Mm -hmm. Our signings all bring something different to this, yeah. to this team, don't they? Yeah. Edinson Cavani, um, obviously Martial is available for this game against Leipzig, so... Whether he starts or not is... Mm. Oh, shit, I fucked my team up, didn't I? Why? Because I put Cavani in and I forgot Martial's back from suspension. So I Well, you can't change that. it now. It's too late. You don't yeah. like Martial. That's fair enough. I probably should have thought about that. Well, yeah, we can talk about it when you show us your team later. Yeah, um, I'll change my team. So you might need to change the graphic. Cool. So you put Martial instead of Cavani? Instead of um, Cavani, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Um, so, Karen, then, you're asking me about the new signings that Solskjaer's made? Yeah, well, well, particularly Cavani, what did you make of his his debut? He didn't He didn't have too much to do, did he? He came on, we chucked a few balls in at him. He, he had one, obviously, his first touch was a little <laughs> sort of cheeky twist around the corner that almost caught the goalkeeper out of the near post, uh, which was nice to see. And, it, again... This doesn't have to be comparisons to Martial and stuff because you want players that are different to each other. There are a lot of things Martial does that Cavani can't do. It's not like a finally we've got a real striker, but someone who their instinct is to poach at the near post. And we saw it later on as well when um, Mason Greenwood put the ball into him and he was poaching at the near His post. His first opportunity, the one where he runs across, for, uh, Martial don't make that run. No, no, no chance. Because he did it that, twice. Not he actually, that. He made, a, you know he made I mean? a run to the near post for the actual corner and he circled back around and made it again for the second cross in. Mm. And yeah, Martial doesn't have that one run, straight away, reset, run again, get in front of the man. And then obviously, the, again, the second one, Greenwood crosses it in, he hits it towards goal and it gets blocked immediately by Thiago Silva. But just having someone who, if you put the ball into the near post, I'm tapping it in, mm. which is just great balance to have. And, uh, you know, especially when Martial's injured or, or, or uh, suspended as he is now, Cavani especially, I just think he's got that poacher's instinct. And as we see with Zlatan when he was at United and then even Zlatan at AC Milan now, if you put the ball in the air at the near post, he'll head it in. And he'll do that till he's 40. Now, obviously, I don't think Cavani's the man he was when he was 27. I don't think he's going to be top scorer or anything this season. But it's so nice to have an option where you've got a genuine poacher, number nine, who has also got great work rate. Like he's the sort of player United like or that Solskjaer likes where he's willing to sprint around, get tackles in, push back when he needs to, build up play. But if you put the ball in the near post, he'll be there. And yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to finally have someone like that at United. How good was it to also just 
Cavani's coming out. Yeah. It's like seeing him warming up. You're yeah, like, oh my him God. and Pogba yeah, having a, a chat. Pogba star. Pogba like was beatboxing. Cavani yeah. was um, spitting. Yeah. Getting ready. Yeah, they're getting warmed up in the little <laughs> rap battle in the changing room. Um, but yeah, it's, it's great. When you saw them chatting before the game and then you saw him running up and down the touchline and then warming up down the goal line as well. Did you notice that? It was like he'd gone all the way down the touchline to the corner flag, gone around the corner, he was warming up on the goal line. Sniffing it. <laughs> cheeky, very cheeky. But You know like when you give a dog a sniff of something? Yeah, and then they go after it. it. Yeah, yeah sniffing the goal, the net. And then when he so he can get it. He knows exactly Probably how to get there. <laughs> in the posts, homing, be- like Pissed a home- homing post. pigeon. Yeah, <laughs> my post, bitch. That near post. Um, yeah, it's nice to see, and it's good. As I was saying before the game, you look through the squad now, and there are top players and star players in a lot of different positions. You've got people like, Sorry, I, I mean, I know he's had a lot of criticism this season, but uh, Harry Maguire, I think, is a, is a good defender. I think Tellers, you've got who inspires some sort of excitement you've got Pogba you've got Van der Beek you've got Bruno you've got Cavani Martial's a different player to who he was when Solskjaer took over as is Rashford like you look at this team from a couple of years ago there's nine or ten exciting players in this team now whereas you know back then when Solskjaer took over everyone was down back everyone then. was low well <laughs> Lukaku was the main striker back in who, day well, well yeah it seems like it though Lukaku <laughs> was the main striker who didn't want to be there Martial couldn't get a game because he couldn't get in uh, on the left hand side of a Rashford and he didn't play as a striker Rashford was being told that he's never going to be a goal scorer by Mourinho on Sky Paul Pogba wanted to leave the defence letting loads of goals it has changed and Wan-Bissaka as well is another one who he's a standout right back especially defensively so Another yeah, good game against it's Chelsea. It's nice to have players warming up and coming on who you think, oh, they're actually really good. Lindelof pleased me against... Uh, yeah. I thought he was our man of the match. Marauding forward. That one two he did with um, with Rashford, I think it was, wasn't it? Ran into the box, pulled it back for Pogba, yeah. and Pogba had that shot. Like, Yeah, that's excellent. It's almost as though... And you've seen it with De Gea and Henderson, I think. I know we made a mistake earlier on in the season, De Gea, but generally speaking, this season, De Gea has been excellent. And, and maybe you see Twan Zabi come in uh, against PSG and have an outstanding performance. Maybe Lindelof thought, right, what do I do that either Twan Zabi can't do or doesn't do? And maybe he thinks, right, I'm going to get the ball and I'm going to push forward, I'm going to drive forward, I'm going to make more passes, I'm going to be a bit more expansive and show off my creative side because I need to do something that is outstanding to stay in this team. Outstanding. So maybe we've got a bit of... Uh, what a tune. I don't know it. You don't know Andy Cole outstanding? Oh, I know the song, but I don't. I couldn't when sing it to you. When we finish, we'll have a little boogie to I it. I couldn't sing it to you. Um, it brings us on to team news. Obviously, we're going to speak about RB Leipzig in a little bit more depth shortly, um, and get predictions in that. Have whose team? Who we, who are we going first with, lads? Go with Joe. Go with me first. Here's my team then. Go on, Joe. Uh, we've got De Gea, Wan Bissaka, Twan Zabi coming back in, Harry Maguire and Tellez. Uh, then we've got Pogba and Matic. Um, and then I'm thinking Greenwood's going to come back because he played against Chelsea, so we can't say he's injured anymore. And if he's willing to play him against that, excuse me, if he's willing to play him in that game, then you know I think he's our best right winger. I've also gone Van der Beek, uh, and I've gone Rashford and Martial. I think maybe give Bruno a rest. Um, I know it's not much of a rest because it's a home game, so it's not like he's saving travel or anything like that, but he plays every minute, um, and hopefully we can get the job done without him. But I just think Twan Zabi deserves to play after the game of the week. Obviously, he got rested against Chelsea. I don't think having not played for <coughs> 10 months, you can play him two games in a week. Tellez deserves a game because, again, when else is he going to play if he's, not, if he's not the first choice in the league? Um, but, yeah, I've gone with Van der Beek in there because I, I do think he's going to get some minutes. And, obviously, Martial returning from form, you'd have to be a fool to leave him out of your squad. You would have to be a fool to, yeah. to leave him out of the squad. Um, I'm, I'm disappointed that you've kind of gone with a similar team to me. My team is... Um, David De Gea in goal. Um, I have gone with the like, centre half Lindelof and Twan Zabi mm-hmm. based on if Ali wants to talk about form all the time, then it's time to drop your captain, mate. Do you know what I mean? Do you not think Harry if Maguire you're going to pick your team against Chelsea based on form, yep. then how about you pick this team on form and drop Harry Maguire? Still gives me the heat. Harry was good against Chelsea not and <laughs> against Newcastle. He wasn't better than Lindelof against Chelsea. No, but he, he, I don't think he was dropping. And he still gives you the heebie jeebies like. With some of them he- headers that he was making, mm. them, them headers where he looks like he's going to slam it down 60 yards down the other end of the pitch and he goes one yard. Yeah, like, come on. I'd go Lindelof. This is my predi- like preferred yeah. 11 more than predicted because Maguire will start. Um, so I'd go Lindelof, Transabi because they're the best centre-halves on form. Um, Alex Tellez to come back in. Um, Aaron Wambasaka at right-back. Fred and Pogba in the middle. 
Uh, with Donny van der Beek ahead of him, I would like to see Bruno given a rest as well. Uh, Greenwood and Rashford wide with Anthony Martial through the middle. Obviously, mm. if it was a if Martial played against Chelsea, you'd go come on. Wouldn't you? I think what is probably the standout there is we've both dropped Bruno. Not dropped. No, well, I've rested him. Whatever. This we've both, we, we are both Beck. not chose. We've both not chosen Bruno. And and I think. Champions League, Old Trafford. Mm. That's probably why Maguire will start because he never played in the Champions League. But Champions League, oh, Old Trafford, Donny van der Beek. Yes. He's played in the Champions League a lot. He's actually had probably Champions some of League the most memorable moments yeah. in the Champions League. And he'll be comfortable with that. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I'm going for that. Quite similar teams, as you said. I've gone with Maguire. I've also Four, gone two, with three, Matic one again, in both of us. Do you I think, think the three four one two three five two kind of thing is something we'll... I don't think Ole will fear Leipzig the way he fears PSG. And maybe rightly so. Obviously, Leipzig got to a semi-final themselves, didn't they? Um, certainly a quarter-final. So maybe he should, but I don't think he will. I think he will go for his trusted four two three one. And also, with the return of Mason Greenwood, with um, the return of Martial as well, um, I reckon we'll probably see that formation one thing I wouldn't mind seeing because there's been a lot of talk about Paul Pogba and why he's not playing and all this sort of stuff but mm. if anyone who's watched him play this season can surely see why he's not starting like he was very poor to start the season off and I'm saying that as someone who has consistently praised him and said that he's United's best player so I feel like I'm not being overly harsh by saying how bad he's been but surely you can see why Pogba was dropped but the, I've seen a lot of people online saying that They'd like to see a diamond in there to allow us to play Bruno and Pogba together. It'd allow Neither Tellers the freedom as well back. because Matic would slip him yeah. between the defenders and then Tellers can go and do what he wants. Would you fancy a bit of that? A bit of that uh, I, diamond I don't, system? I like the three four one two as well. Yeah, I like it because you can play Cavani. You can play three, two of the three: Cavani, Marshall, Rashford, mm. or two of the four if you, if you clean, include Greenwood. You can play one of Bruno. And Van der Beek just behind, or Pogba even. I actually think as well, we play at the moment in the four-two-three-one. We play Bruno ahead of Pogba. Mm. We should we should swap that around I don't because know. you've seen when no. Pogba goes forward, he's better at keeping the ball. Yeah, but he don't his get ball his... retention is better than Bruno's, and Bruno has the energy. So yeah, if you think about it. It makes sense. But I think Paul Pogba's long passing is better. And look at the numbers that, that, that Bruno gets. But even he will he, still get those numbers. Even take penalties away. He gets more goals and assists than he Pogba still has get those numbers. in his United career, except for that 12 weeks. He would still get that? I don't think he would. He would, though. Playing from Why wouldn't he? Because he's playing deeper, so he's having less shots. He's getting in the box less. But he'll, move, he'll, he'll move forward. He comes to those positions maybe. anyway. I don't know. When he gets pissed well, off and Luke Shaw, he has to come and then. wipe his ass. Why is, why is Paul Pogba not getting the same goals and assists he was when he was playing at Because 10? Pogba's less re press resistant, one. And two, they're different players. Pogba is quick, and he has long strides that will get him there. And he can obviously play that position. But Bruno is naturally... He buzzes around. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? He's more, Which is more, he's more energetic, that. isn't he? And industrious. Right. Shut up. We'll talk about this later. Um, RB Leipzig, Champions League. Mm -hmm. United have won their first game. Leipzig won their first the top game. Of the they're top of the Bundesliga as well, RB Leipzig. Top of the Bundesliga. Top of the Champions League group stage. Mm -hmm. group group goal difference. What, what group are we in? Group Def. E or F? Def. H. Oh. Group Hef. <laughs> Group Hef. The group of Hef. Yeah, Hef. Right, go on then. I'll be Leipzig. Group of Hefers. What you know about that group, don't you? Uh, not really, no. Uh. <laughs> um, what's the, the, they've got a manager that's so young that <laughs> he, he, has a, he has a dummy on the sideline. Did you know that? He's that young. He wears a nappy when he's, when he's coaching. People act like he's 14, this guy. <laughs> Don't they? Look how young he is. He's so young, Marcus RB Rashford Leipzig, feeds him. Yeah, RB Leipzig manager <laughs> is so young, he comes straight on his bike to the game. He's still got papers from his paper round in his front basket. That's how young he is. The Telegraph. Yeah, exactly. Just throwing it. Enjoy. <laughs> Do you remember that game, Paperboy? No. What a loser. What, me or you for playing a game called Paperboy? <laughs> when are you playing a normal game, you weirdo? Was like, this wasn't game before game? games Back existed. Day. Right. Play right. Pac-Man instead. Pac-Man? Yeah. Pac-Man. Imagine if there's a game called Pac-Man and he's just, <laughs> <laughs> just talking and he's like going after Boris Johnson and all people. <laughs> That'd be great. Right, go on. Someone's going to make that. Right? Leipzig. Leipzig. How do you think? Um, some players against Hertha Berlin. Yeah. 
Um, they've obviously started the season well. Um, top of the Bundesliga, as we said, I think four wins, one draw. Uh, Nagelsmann is is a, is a young lad. He's younger than Cavani, which is mad, isn't it? How old is he? 33. Um, younger than you? He's younger than me by some years. Is he younger than you? How old are you? I'm 28. And? <laughs> <laughs> 28 plus. <laughs> 28. How old actually are you? 30? Plus. 35? 3. 33? Same 31. age as Nagel's, mate. 31. Oh, 31. 28 plus 3. Oh, sorry. Because I said 30 Fuck plus and you said 3. Um, Jesus. Yeah, they're a good side, aren't they? And they're, they're a dangerous side. Um, I'm slightly concerned uh, about them. And I'm, I'm also a little bit more concerned about the fact that we're playing at home. And for some reason, we're bad at home at the moment. Um, I don't think that's the case. Okay. I was, the fixtures we've had. I just think it's a coincidence. That's shit, in it? Right. It's coincidence at the moment. Right. Pure yeah, because it's only a, sh- a small sample size, isn't yeah. it? Are you worried about Leipzig? Leipzig. Yeah, they've got some good players. They have. Um, obviously, the their last game, they rested all their main mans. So, the Sorloth, mm. Justin Cliver, and Unkunku started for them up top. So, Poulsen never started. Yusuf Poulsen. Yeah. They, they've got He'll Forsberg as well. They've got Upper Forsberg. They've got Makaleli, Mukieli. Mukiel. Upper Makano. Mukieli. And now nah, they got. What's that other fella's name? Almo. They got him. Yeah. They got him. Um, Danny um, Almo, I obviously the plays in Spain. Yeah. A lot of the threat that they kind of had because they've lost some of their key players in the transfer window. But yeah. they're one of those teams that will constantly. Yeah. The way their recruitment is, they'll always have the next best thing coming through mm. their ranks. They bought that lad from City as well, didn't they? And and Angelo and Helino, and Helino. Yes, he's yeah. their top scorer this season, you know. But I think we'll dick him. Do you? Dick him down. You're not worried about him. This. What do they say, call it? Nagelsmann ball or something, probably, don't they? Because everyone has to have ball of it. Nagel's it? ball. I don't like that. Which I don't know, because people say Ali ball. I just yeah. hate it. Yeah, it's Sari rubbish. ball. Shit. Like, what's the point? No. Rubbish. Arteta ball. Like, you've invented a new way of playing football. It's just Lamp, football, isn't it? Lamps ball. No one's saying Lamps ball. <laughs> That's the thing that he eats when he goes to his Chinese buffet. I want... A, like a chicken, s- s- like s- sweet and sour, but I want a whole chicken deep fried in a ball, and I'll eat that. Lamps ball. And then you pour hot sweet and sour, and it opens up like those desserts that people have on Instagram. There's <laughs> just a full roast chicken in it, and then Frank Lampard eats it. He looked weird in his woolly hat the other day, didn't he? It looked like he, he looked bad. Do you know who I like. ate? Jody Morris. Why? I just, I just wish he's probably a nice fella, but every time I see him, I've, I imagine his voice, proper Cockney fella. Mm. And I just think he just looks like a wrong gun, doesn't he? <laughs> he does, but <laughs> he does. I don't know it? why. I don't know why. I don't know why. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just see him, and I just think I want you to lose. And then he drew. And then he does usually. Um, back to Leipzig then, because obviously we've played Chelsea now. <laughs> Sorry. Give me a score prediction for this game. Two zero to Manchester yeah. United. Anthony Martial is going to score. Score both. And then Edinson Cavani is going to score. I'd love Cavani to Off score. The I'd love him to start. I wonder if we will. Obviously, I've gone for the four-two-three <coughs> one there because that's what I think we'll play. I wonder if there's a chance we might put Tellers in and play the wing backs and play those split strikers again with Marshall and Cavani. Yeah, because then Cav- Marshall can drift and do yeah. what he wants. Can't Maybe he? Rashford can have a rest, but Ole doesn't tend to rest Rashford, does he? On so FIFA I doubt we'll twenty-one, see I play Cavani through the middle, Marshall on the right, Rashford on the left, Van der Beek, Pogba, Bruno. Jesus. And I kick ass. And you can see so if you get beat by a team that looks like that, you got beat by me, baby. What is this online? Yeah, you got all my United players. No, just seasons. I just play seasons. Oh, seasons. Okay, so because I don't I spend money on ultimate, ultimate team. team. Well, neither do I. So my team's shit on there. Is it? So I'm not dipping my toe in yet. No, fair enough. All right. Lovely. All right, thanks. If you want to see any FIFA content from us two bell ends, mm. by the way, let us know. We're going to start doing that soon, I think. Oh, we just not even care if they want it or not. Should we just give well, it? Well, we, sh- we should do it bec- because we think it'll be good fun. Oh, okay. I, I thought we were getting audience consent. Uh, no. Yeah, both. Non consensual FIFA content. Perfect. <laughs> That's what it's going to be called. <laughs> it's a great title, isn't it? Here's the content you didn't want. Not but we'll make it anyway because we want to and we like it. Yes, exactly. Why are you looking over? Because I'm boiling. You're looking at the time. It's, it's 27 degrees on the thermostat it's, in here. What am I, a koala bear? <laughs> what is this? Feel like some sort of boa constrictor with a heat lamp on me. Twenty-seven <laughs> degrees. What is that? I'm like a, on a hot plate at Morrison's here. Chicken tikka pasty. Rotisserie, Joe. Ro- I'm being rotisserie <laughs> in my own skin. Unbelievable. Oh God. 
before Joel mounts, we are going to head out of here. Um, Joel, yep. do you want to plug anything? Yeah, the watch along tomorrow. We're going to be starting early again. As I'm back. We did against so, Chelsea. Adam's you know. back, but we'll be starting at 6 30. So start at 6 30, watch it all the way through till what time's the end of the game. Match. Kicker? 8 o'clock. We're mad. So you're 6 30, you tune in, you get to see Stephen's opposition preview, you get to see all sorts of preview, you get to see some of your predictions, some of your scores that you're sending in online. You also get to see the team news as soon as it happens, brand new. Hour and live. a half. Adam, we did it without you, and we'll do it without you again if you're going to be whinging like this. And then we've got the watch along starting, l- properly starting. Us boys on the table. Half past seven. Just spread All out sorts of table. chats. Looking forward to the game. Hopefully we get a few goals this time. But yeah, make sure you tune in for the watch along. Starting at 6.30pm. All new time. Tomorrow. All new time. A time that no one's ever heard of. Also, I'm like 10k away from 100k. So subscribe to Adam McCullough TV. Thank you. Um, YouTube.com slash Adam McCullough. Plug. Um, anyway. Joe. Good and to see people, you, mate. Thank you. Good to be with you again. Mm-hmm. Um, guys at home thank you for being with us um, I feel like me and Joel need a safe space to talk about what we want to talk about yeah I agree um, so like, consensual should we just sack off video? uncensored and just me and you just do our own show well you can do both I think you stay behind that curtain did you hear me say that you heard that oh shit I'm no. in trouble you got, you got to do it you're still doing it you love it alright see you in a bit <laughs>